I'm super excited to share some of the uh, recent work on uh, 3D concrete printing that I have done in my first year uh, of master's at the University of North Dakota. And I will begin with, uh, with an intro and then uh, review some cases that I studied to better understand the technology. And uh, then how fresh properties of different material can affect uh, structural performance of the 3D printed uh, structures. Uh, there hasn't been substantial advancement in construction industry in recent years and uh, little investment uh, in research and development, even in developed countries, is mentioned to be the reason. Uh, industries like aerospace and automotive um, has been embracing uh, additive manufacturing and maybe it's the time for the construction industry to get in on the action. Uh, by using additive manufacturing, we can make custom design uh, structures that fit the specific need of each uh, project. Uh, today I, I will specifically talk about an extrusion base of additive manufacturing which is called 3D concrete printing. Herein I will refer to as 3D CP. An interesting fact about the technology is that it dates back to 1944 when Herschel wall building machine was patented and it's interesting that they used to print between gaps using the same method that we are doing in 2023 using lintels. Printing system and material are two main components of uh, this technology and as for material selection um, for first characteristic which is mentioned to be more challenging to control uh, we can uh, mention open time, buildability, flowability, and extrudability to be more uh, important to control. Talking about the mixed design, water to binder ratio is um, important than the additives that we use. And uh, it was reported that water to binder and sound to binder ratio of, um, of uh, ink that we use in this technology is lower than uh, even a uh, typical molder, which makes it more paste-like. As for mechanical ca characteristics, anisotropic behavior is a, a big issue in this technology, which printing quality and time interval uh, have um, effect on it. <coughs> for reported benefits, uh, they vary. Uh, from total cost to workforce need and up to waste and emission. But they, it can be seen that uh, advantages vary in different cases, indicating that technology has different outcomes depending on the application. And one of the biggest challenges is the lack of uh, designing code for this technology. Uh, but I should mention that International Code Council has recently uh, released an uh, evaluation uh, acceptance criteria for black buffalo 3D printed walls. And given the limited available information on the structural performance of large scale 3D CP, I uh, conducted a comprehensive review of globally constructed cases. I found 124 projects around the world. Um, and looking at the world map, uh, we can see US uh, build the most number of projects followed by China. And uh, talking about the challenges, um, it, not all the information about the projects were publicly available, uh, which made it harder for me to conduct this um, review. And I should also mention that graphs that you will see depict the data with all the available characteristics that we have for that graph. Looking at the left side um, uh, graph, we can see the cumulative number of 3 dcp projects has increased exponentially in the recent years, and Icon being the most active um, company in the US. For construction method, on-site was preferred over prefabrication, and gantry system was used the most. After that, it was ro mobile robotic arm and uh, robotic arm. <coughs> Looking at the structural type of constructed projects in over the years, we can see that residential um, houses were uh, experienced a, a rise in recent years, with um, being about 40% of all the 
projects built uh, in, in, in the uh, studied case. About 44 of projects were built on site um, using gantry system, while it was about seven projects uh, using ro uh, robotic arms in prefabrication method. <coughs> and it can al also be seen that in this um, graph, gantry system was mostly used for residential house, while uh, robotic arm and mobile robotic arm was um, equally used for um, projects like infrastructure, demonstration, and residential. Most of the projects uh, had lower than 100 square meter of area, and with gantry system having the most um, average built area of 154 square meter. One of the most important takeaways from our study was that uh, we could categorize this, uh, the uh, built projects into three different categories. One, purely load-bearing 3D CP structure, which surprisingly was only one project. Secondly, printed and cast structure commonly designed based on unreinforced masonry design. And lastly, non-load-bearing structures commonly adopted as permanent form for reinforced concrete. We only found one 3D CP project which shows that there is a lack of information on how well these structures perform. So this made us um, want to study um, 3D printed structures in more depth. We conducted a 3D CP buried concrete structure study and um, the main reason was that workforce shortage is a big issue in North Dakota and that's why University of North Dakota uh, adapted this technology. And we decided to print concrete pipes. The reason was that we wanted to print code compliance structures and compare them to code requirements and evaluate the structural performance uh, to conventional made uh, concrete. And we chose to uh, not to use reinforcement because Studies show that using reinforcement uh, can um, affect the structural performance of 3D printed walls due to uh, introducing voids. We uh, conducted rheology tests and uh, we studied how it affected the printing process and ultimately the hardened and structural performance. We used a uh, uh, big six axis robotic arm, a pump, and a mixer, and two different material. For process, we designed our CAD model, then exported it into an STL file, and then sliced it into, uh, to have the G code to be able to program and print the final structure. We used two different materials, uh, namely the horizon printer and Vertico, here in I believe to as HV and Sika, which I call S, Water to material ratio was 16 for both uh, material. And one important difference was that we didn't have any short fibers in HV, but we had short, short fibers in Sika. And printing properties varied in different uh, printing. For small scale test, <coughs> we conducted uh, fresh characteristics by doing extrudability, by changing the extrusion rate of pump to find the optimum speed. We conducted buildability tests by printing single layer hollow cylinder with 500 millimeters diameter and flow table tests based on ACMC1437. And we also performed shape retention and testing time using a 600 gram of static load. For mechanical tests, we uh, performed compression strength based on ACMC109 on printed and saw cut sample in three different directions. For 3D printing, we 3D printed two big pipes using the same nozzle speed, nozzle diameter, number of layers in width and height. And we performed a larger scale structural test based on ASCMC 497 for concrete pipes. As for extrudability, we found the speed between two and three, an optimum speed for our uh, pump, pump that we used. And for buildability, we found a higher buildability in this material compared to HV. 
And for flow table test, we found out that the uh, initial flowability of S material was higher than HP. But as you can see, the blue line, uh, the decrease was um, more than the HP material while it was so gradual in HP. We couldn't go further than 50 minutes because we couldn't um, tap the uh, material properly in the half con uh, sample of flow table test. But we performed it at 10, 30, and 50 minutes. For shape retention test, we did it at 10, 20, and 30 minutes. And the only uh, sample that we could see any sh uh, shape deformation was using S material at 10 minutes. The reason might be that uh, we might not be able to see any shape deformation using 600 uh, static load with flowability lower than a certain number, which should be somewhere between 173 and 163. For compressive strength, um, the average uh, compressive strength of H material was uh, found to be 6,000. 189 PSI or 42.6 megapascal. Uh, and as you can see in the pictures, no um, big voice was observed in the printed samples. And it was reported that compressive strength was reported to be about 4,800 for S or 40 megapascal. We printed two big pipes um, and tested it in uh, three edge bearing tests. We found out that HV pipe could uh, had a strength of six, about 6,000 uh, pound force per linear feet, while it was about 4,500 for uh, S material. They both uh, exceeded the required strength of ASCM standard, and um, even about 23 and 42% more. I should mention that the uh, internal diameter and thickness varied in these two pipes, and these were mainly because of uh, different uh, fresh uh, properties of these two materials. Looking at the load deflection uh, diagram, we can see that this material had uh, a little bit uh, higher deflection or flexibility than uh, HP material. The reason can be uh, due to the uh, presence of short fibers. One potential weakness of the printed pipes uh, is the intersection of layers. So we studied uh, the effect of seam section on the pipe strength. By aligning the uh, seam section, which was expected to be the weak section, to the um, expected cracking region of the pipe, which is at left and right spring line, as well as crown and invert. Um, we used a high-speed camera to uh, follow the crack propagation of the uh, printed pipes. And we found out that the crack pro propagation exactly followed the zigzag pattern of the pipes. The reason can be a weaker bonding of layers in the seam section due to vertical and horizontal movement of nozzle. However, after looking at the uh, Borken sample at the seam section, no um, big voids was observed. Lower effective width in, compari in comparison to the um, nearby region might be the main reason why this happened. After comparing the seam section with the rest, we observed that a notable reduction in voids at, at that seam section, which could be attributed to the weaving motion of the uh, printing nozzle, happened. And it was interesting. We expected to see a weaker section at the seam section, but due to lower voids, we, uh, we can infer that it's not the weak, but uh, more strong section. In conclusion, um, I can say that one of the uh, most important takeaways from the cases that I studied was the uh, categorization of the projects. And I can mention that on-site 3D printed of residential buildings using gantry was used the most. 
Low flowability or volatility of that we saw in S material resulted in higher availability but less printing quality. Rheology properties will affect printing and consequently harden and ultimately structural performance of 3D printed structures. Flexibility increased by using uh, short fibers in the material, but the uh, failure is still considered to be brittle. Seam section is not as big as we expected, and it can influence the pipe failure, but only when seam section is aligned with the anticipated, anticipated cracking region, and most probably due to decrease in effective width. And lastly, strength of pipes exceeded the required strength of ASCM standard. I'd like to thank my advisor, Dr. Durafshan, for giving me this uh, unique opportunity uh, to work on this project. I'd also uh, thank Dr. McGuire, who's the doctor, uh, Dalton Wade, Bosha Bashaati, and Faz Jaffari, and North Dakota Department of Transportation and College of Engineering and Mines at the University of North Dakota. Thank you all, and I look forward to engaging with you during the convention.